Hey guys, what's up? It's Moz here, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys the best OBS settings for recording your screen, whether that's Minecraft, CSGO, or really anything on your screen. All this is going to be HD, 1080p, 60fps with like no lag whatsoever. And I know I made a video just like this a little over a year ago, but OBS has changed quite a lot since then, so I thought it would be time to make a good update video. And I know that a lot of you guys actually found me from that video, so I thought it would be a good time to just update it in general. Hopefully these steps do help you guys out. Before we get started, I just wanted to say be sure to hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and go and hit that subscribe button if y'all already because I am on more than 25,000 subscribers and all help is appreciated. But on that, let's get on with the video. Alright guys, so first things first, just go ahead and open up OBS Studio, and if you don't already have it for some reason, then I'll have a link in the description below on where you can go ahead and download it. But uh, once you do open it up, yours might have like a white theme on it instead of like a black gray one like the one I currently have on. But don't worry about any of that, I'll go more in detail on how you can change that later on. But once you're here, I want you guys to go ahead and add a scene if you don't have one already. You can do that by just going here and clicking on the plus button, and from here you can just name your scene, so I'm going to name it Screen Recording. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and click on OK, and say we want to record our actual screen, all you have to do is just click the plus button right here. Click on display capture, after from here you can click on OK. Pick the monitor you want to record, I'm going to be recording my main one, and I want to capture my cursor so I'm going to click on OK. And there you go, so if I right click here and click enable preview, as you can see my monitor would be being recorded. And uh, obviously for my case I did do display capture because I do want to record my screen, but you can go ahead and pick game capture or whatever you want if you're going to be recording something else in your case. But once you've got your scenes made up and all that good stuff, I want you guys to head over to the settings button right here. And from here, uh, in the general tab you can go ahead and mess around with the theme and the language if you want to so right here I have English and then theme is dark yours is probably gonna be on default you can change it to dark if you want to I think it's easier on the eyes so I keep it like that from here we're actually gonna go ahead and skip over the stream tab as this is just gonna be a video for like recording so if you guys do want me to make a tutorial on how to stream for like Facebook Twitch and YouTube gaming then be sure to let me know in the comment section below and I'll get on that as soon as possible but once we are in the output tab what I want you guys to do is make sure you're on the advanced tab right here or the advanced output mode instead of the simple one from there just go and click on the recording tab and that's where we're gonna get into the good stuff so from here, make sure your type is on standard instead of custom output, and right here we're going to actually pick a recording path. I personally like to have my recordings go to my secondary hard drive so it doesn't clutter up any space on my SSD, but for this video I'm just going to go ahead and make a new folder on my desktop. So I'm just going to go to my desktop, make a new folder, and I'm just going to go ahead and title it videos. From here I'm just going to double click on it, and then right here I'm just going to click select folder. And now this means that every video I record is going to be sent to that folder if I want to watch it or upload it later on. And of course this path can be changed at any time, so don't worry about having to find a permanent path. But once you're done with that, I highly recommend changing your recording format to MP4 instead of FLV or whatever it's currently on. Definitely just go ahead and do MP4. For the audio track, I like to keep this at 1. And for encoder, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, then go ahead and use the NVENC H.264. If you do have like an AMD graphics card, then you should have an option that says something with AMD in it. And it's actually going to come up right away if you do have an AMD one because your PC is going to automatically recognize whether you have an NVIDIA or an AMD GPU. You can actually use the X264 one if you have an NVIDIA GPU, but for the tutorial, I'm actually just going to be using the H.264 one. For rescale output, I like to just leave that unchecked because I don't really mess around with that. For a rate control, I just use CBR, which essentially means constant bitrate. And this is basically how crispy and clear you will actually be able to make your video and audio sound after you're done recording. And what I like to use for my bitrate is 40,000, as it gives me like the best quality needed for my videos. But if that's too much for your PC, then you can go ahead and downscale it, depending on the specs of your PC. If you have an older one, definitely downscale it. If you have a really nice computer, then maybe even raise it to 50,000. But I don't recommend going anywhere above 50,000. For my keyframe interval, I like to keep that at zero. And then I have default, main, auto, and then I do use two pass encoding. For GPU, I have it at zero, and for B frames, I have it at two. And now over to the audio tab. So, what I like to do is I like to set it all the way up to the highest, which is actually 320. And the reason I don't set it anywhere lower is because there's not really a, a reason to downscale it, as we're just going to be doing local recordings. And of course, we're going to want the best audio possible, so 320 is just going to be perfect for us. Go ahead and click on apply, and then we can move on to the actual audio tab. So, first things first is you want to make sure that your sample rate is going to be the same rate as your actual microphone and you can check that by going down here right clicking on that click on recording devices from here find your actual microphone right click on that click on properties from here click on advanced and whatever the little number here is that's what your sample rate should be so mine's 48,000 so I'm going to keep that at 48,000 right here if yours is 44,100 go ahead and change it to 44.1 but mine's at 48,000 so I'm just going to keep it like that for channels I keep it at stereo for my desktop audio device I keep that at default so this is just going to be your actual like music and like sounds coming from 
from your computer, whether that's gameplay sounds, music, stuff like that, or people in Skype and things like that. I don't have a second desktop device, so I keep that disabled. For your mic or auxiliary audio device, I actually use my actual microphone. Don't leave it at default. I actually pick the microphone that you want to be recording with. So in my case, it's going to be my Blue Yeti microphone. I leave the other two disabled and I have nothing checked right here. If you do make any changes, then go ahead and click on apply. Don't click OK yet because we're going to be moving on to the video tab now. In the video tab, I do actually record all my videos in 1080p, so I can leave the base resolution at 1080p, which is actually 1920 by 1080. And I can also do the same for the output scaled resolution, leave that at 1920 by 1080. And the only time that you would want your base and output things to be different is if you record a video in 1080p or something like that, but you want your video to actually be in 720p to save file space and render times or anything like that. So definitely just go ahead and keep them the same if you want to, unless you do want to change something up, but most people just keep them the same. So that's what I recommend you guys do. And so moving on, your downscale filter is actually really important for your videos. And you want to keep that at whatever this is, the, the third option, the sharpened scaling in 32 samples. And the reason why I say that is just because it's the best one that you can pick out of the three. So definitely go with that over the others. And obviously for your FPS, go with 60 FPS as that's the new standard on YouTube these days. And it's pretty noticeable when you someone makes a video that's not 60 FPS. So if you do want to make the best video as possible, go with 60 FPS. Uh, most of the time I don't ever really touch the hotkeys, but they are pretty nice to have if you want to quickly mute your microphone while you're recording or pause your recording or stop your recording or start your recording and things like that. There's a ton you can do with hotkeys, but I'm not really into that kind of stuff. So I'll just leave that uh, blank and all that good stuff. And now for the advanced tab, this is going to be pretty important, so be sure to pay attention. Uh, I keep the process priority above normal, so definitely do that. And I keep my rendering settings at Direct3D 11. If you do have an AMD graphics card, then you probably want to change this to OpenGL. From here, I keep the color format at NV12, the color space at 709, and the color range at full. And the reason I do all those is so I can get the best colors and quality in my video. And basically, you can just copy and paste the rest of the stuff from my settings down in your settings, because I'm not going to be changing anything else. This should be default already. Basically, Basically, all the rest of the settings are default, so just go ahead and keep them like that. If yours are different, then go ahead and copy them. But from there, you can click on OK. Make sure that all of your settings were copied down. And that's pretty much it for the video, guys. So I'm just going to quickly start up a recording. And now, as you can see, I am recording my screen so I can minimize this, mess around with things like move this around, move this around, move this around, just move things around. And obviously, you probably wouldn't be doing this in your recording. This is just a test recording. But once you are done, you can go ahead and click on Stop Recording. It's going to stop your recording. And you can actually just go ahead and exit out of OBS if you don't need it anymore. And if you do go to your recording pet that we did set up, like one of the steps previously you will see that you do have your recording right here and i'm just gonna quickly play it up and just see what happens as you guys can see i'm actually moving things around that i was doing in the recording previously so i can close out of that and that's really it for the video guys i do hope you guys enjoyed be sure to let me know if you guys do want me to make a streaming tutorial or anything like that and that's really it for the video guys I hope you guys did enjoy be sure to hit that like button share this video with your friends and go ahead and hit that subscribe button if y'all ready because i am on my way to 25,000 subscribers and a help is appreciated but other than that i will see you guys in my next video peace